Good evening. I just want to say I'm dedicating my reading this evening to my cousin Richie Applebaum, who passed away suddenly on Sunday. His funeral is tomorrow. The first piece I'm reading is called The Death Penalty, and it has absolutely nothing to do with my cousin Richie. I read it last year. <laughs> the Death Penalty. It's making its premiere here tonight. I love executions. I go to as many as I can. Thus far, I've been to three via the electric chair, 11 by lethal injection, and one bless the great state of Utah by firing squad. I'd love to witness a hanging, but I don't think there's any states that still do them. If you know otherwise, I'd be most obliged if you'd let me know. I get in because while there's always seats for journalists and families of the killer's victims, there's also a few for the general public, people like me who are really into these things. At this point, I don't even need to camp outside the night before or the day before to get a spot. The wardens all know me and leave my name at the gate. They take care of me and I take care of them. One of the executions I attended years ago in Texas, it turns out they think they may have killed an innocent man. Big hoopla about that. A commission was formed to look into it and just before the report was to be released, the governor, who was then in the early primaries for his party's, pre for his party's nomination for president, disbanded the commission and the report was buried. Not my problem. There's an ultra-conservative member of the French Parliament who wants to reinstate the country's use of the guillotine. The last time they used it was in 1977, and in 1981 they changed their constitution to abolish capital punishment entirely. While I don't think he stands a snowball's chance in hell, I wish him every success. I mean, how awesome would that be? France brings it back, and I'm on the next flight over. <laughs> On our honeymoon, my wife and I were in Tennessee and I took her to see an execution by electric chair. She never went to another one with me because she found it to be too gruesome for her. But we're still married and I still go and she's okay with that. She's one fine woman. When the kids are older, I'm hoping to take them. The minimum age in some states is 21, 18 in others, and in Alabama, 16-year-olds can attend. I'm going to insist that they come to at least one. After that, it's up to them. I just want them to be exposed to it. And who knows, maybe it will become something they want to share with their old man. Family execution vacations. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. This is called My World, the Hollywood version. In my world, everyone is wealthy and successful. We all work in these incredibly fulfilling and creative careers. Some of us are writers, others are designers, or sculptors, or producers, or filmmakers, and very few of us are attorneys or financial planners, but they're very cool people whom the rest of us can turn to for advice, and even occasionally professional services. We're mostly white, but there are one or two black couples in our circle, and I gotta tell you, you wouldn't know it from speaking to them on the phone. And let us not forget the Edelsteins, David and his brilliant, beautiful wife, Lee Kun. Speaking of wives, they're all beautiful and slender. 20 or more years out of college, and after giving birth several times, there's not a stretch mark or an extra pound on any of them. They could all work as lingerie models. Their teeth still sparkle no matter how many espressos or glasses of Chateau Neuf de Pop they drink. That's how things are, here, are in my world, here in the Hollywood version. We all have servants, of course. Housekeepers, gardeners, nannies, you name it. But we don't think of them as servants. Oh, no, not at all. We think of them as our friends, but actually they're more like family to us. And that's how we teach our children to think of them. I swear, in a worst case scenario, if one of us were to go broke, I think these people would still come in and work for us for free. That's how great the bond is between us. <laughs> because of the successful and creative natures of our careers, we rarely have to report to an office on a regular basis. We all have them, of course, and do drop in on them. But you also have lots of time for lengthy lunches at some of the best restaurants and extended rounds of golf during the week. And when one of us is facing a crisis of some sort, we're all there for that person. Perfect example. One husband from our group, who shall remain nameless, ran off with their 19-year-old Portuguese au pair. The wife was devastated, but we all rallied around her. It was the greatest tragedy any of us had ever had to deal with. And guess what? Within one year, she had established herself as a top-selling fashion designer whose lines regularly sell out in Paris and Milan. She's currently living with Fernand, Brazil's top soccer star. He is even wealthier, 15 years younger, and he absolutely adores her. He is a fine father to her two young children and keeps begging her to marry him. We're all hoping that she accepts. Anyway, that's how things are in my world, the Hollywood version. Wouldn't you want to live here? Yeah.